All right. So I watched. I so I watched Jenny D, and she came out with the D and D tag, and I wanted to do it. So here we are. But I didn't want to just be like just talking, doing nothing. So I'm also going to be working on a bit of my own game here as well. Uh, so we'll just get right into it, I guess. The first question is, what was your first D&D &D character? Uh, my first D&D &D character was a gnome cleric of the nature domain, and her name was Nisa. She was cute, fun, lovable, at least I like to think so. <laughs> uh, very, it was really fun to play. I was... Like, <laughs> I was the only healer. They did have lay on hands, uh, one of the other party members did, but I was pretty much the only healer, which was nice, because I came in, um, it was near the start of their campaign, but it was still pretty, they were already going, uh, because I was invited, uh, for... It was during college, and I knew the DM who was running it, and he's like, hey, do you want to play? And I had heard of D&D, &D, but I had never played before. And I was like, yes, put me in, coach. I want to play. So he helped me make a character, and by help, <laughs> they didn't have the best introduction to D&D, &D because how they actually did it is they handed me the player's handbook, and they said, okay, read this. And I did, and none of it, I understood like barely anything. I was like, okay, cool. Now what? Like, what did any of that mean? It, so they did, they did help me set up a character, and then we jumped into playing. Yeah, I really enjoyed playing her. Of course, it was during college, so when I left, the school we stopped playing like the campaign just kind of ended the next question which D, &D class is your least favorite to play or do you not want to play um i haven't played a lot i have played like two characters that's it i played in college and then i played uh a one shot with a character that might become a series of one shots uh depending so i I would like to try playing uh, all of the classes. I think just like looking through them, I think like fighter or like barbarian would probably be like my least favorite because that's not really my play style. I think the most like the most hitting other people I'd ever do is as a paladin. I'm not, I'm not very comfortable as a frontline fighter. I just want to support the team. Uh, number three, what D and D spell would you most want to have in real life? I would like to have the spell prayer of healing because it affects multiple people. It's healing, and I really like helping people, so yeah. And it just, it sounds really cool, like prayer of healing. This makes me feel special. Oh, what can you do? I know prayer of healing. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think that would be cool. Uh, number four, what is your favorite D&D &D monster? I don't know how you say it. It's like Coatl, C O U A T L. I don't know. Just the idea of a divine flying snake who watches over like the ancient powers, waits for moments of prophecy. I think that's so cool. Like, it's really cool. Also, snake with wings. It's just a very cool concept. What is your number five is what is your favorite NPC or villain that you've encountered slash created? Yeah, uh, so I'm going to have to say Luke Potts. So 
<laughs> Luke Potts is an interesting character. I made him... <laughs> So I'm DMing a session, right, where they're fighting against this cultist group. And Luke Potts happens to be one of the cultists who is attacking them. At this point in time, though, he doesn't have a name. I just made it random cultists gonna attack them and they'll, like, kill him or get information from him. That's it. <laughs> Which was probably my first mistake, making him a throwaway character, because, of course, that's the one that your players are going to get attached to. And they did. <laughs> so he comes out and attacks them, and the party members at first attack back. And uh, after cutting off his arm, so they go to the point where they cut off his arm. They're like, oh, um, well, he's kind of crazy, so what if we can fix that? And so they tie him up <laughs> and they capture him and the paladin decides they are going to save this person to the point where they melt some of their metal coins to form like a very crude, they didn't roll terribly well, <laughs> they rolled well enough to do it, but uh, a holy symbol that they tie around this cultist. And then every day for next several weeks, they spend praying to their God for the salvation of this man's sanity. And there are several times where they roll really well. And so I'm like, okay, I have to give it to them. Like, at this point, it's been several sessions, it's been like two, and so I've already come up, oh, I'm going to let them cure this man of their insanity if they do this quest. Well, he rolls really well, really well, so I'm like, fine, you could just, your god cures his insanity. So he's now sane, but he doesn't, but he can't give them a lot of information because he was crazy, beforehand he'd like been driven insane from the cult but they still love him so he's forgotten his name he doesn't know a lot of important information he knows some you know enough to push the players in the right directions and I was like okay well he doesn't remember his name so what are you going to name him and of course <laughs> My paladin, this person who has been praying over him for several days, is like, well, several weeks, but days and sessions, but uh, he's like, well, I want his last name to be Potts. And I was like, why? And they're like, because I'm going to start a family, and we're going to have a kid, and we're going to name him Crockpot. I was like, I was like, okay, you're an adventurer, but we'll see how this goes. So they named this man Luke. Luke Pot, with a middle name of Warm, Luke Warm Pot. <laughs> I just let it happen. I mean, like, what else am I supposed to do? I didn't want to come up with a name, which is why I asked the characters to do it. <laughs> but he, it's great. They teach him, they, like, work on training him for one-armed fighting. And he's just, he's not super helpful, because he's kind of weak. He's really weak, but it's he's a good I love him as an NPC. He's just traveling with them now. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you saved my life, I guess I'll stick around. So that's fun. <laughs> Number six. Have any of your characters ever died and what killed them? Uh so no, I've never had a character die. Like I said, I've only played like two separate characters. And uh, Nisa, the one from college, um, you know, the school year ended and so did our campaign. Um, but I like to think that she, she would uh, just go around helping people and, you know, probably eventually went back home and like died from old age there working at a temple or something uh 
Number seven, what is your best natural 20 story? Um, so this isn't, it's not technically, I didn't roll in that 20. It was 20 with, uh, with modifier, but it is, it is my favorite, like high rolling story. So I, we were being attacked. We were in a shop. We just wanted a boat and we got attacked. And, you know, if you're being attacked, you got to fight back, right? Well, the people attacking us happened to have blink dogs in their employ. Though at the time, I had no idea what these things were. I just knew they were dogs. And they looked weird, and they could teleport. It was terrifying. And one... So I'm playing Cleric and playing Nisa in this game. So I'm in the back. I'm like hiding behind the counter, the store counter with an unconscious clerk. And every once in a while I like peek up and cast healing word on my party. And I'm like, please don't die. <laughs> and one of the dogs sees me and comes around the counter to attack me. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to die. I don't have a lot of health. I do very little damage, like this is not good. So do you know, do you know what my character does? She insults the dog. <laughs> my turn, I, I don't even like attack, which is probably kind of done, kind of dumb, but I did it. I insult it. I say, bad doggy and I roll well enough that the DM lets me have it <laughs> the dog feels so ashamed for its actions that it stops attacking me and joins my side so I have a blink dog <laughs> which was great uh, and he, he stuck around for the rest of the fight and until we left the shop so that was that was really cool. I was very proud of myself, very terrified because I was like, this is what I'm going to do and it's probably an awful decision, but I rolled well enough for it. <laughs> All right, the next question, question number eight, what is your best natural one story? Um, I don't have one that I can think of. Like I know I've rolled that ones before but I can't just think of a really good, like, not one story. Um, I did play in this same campaign where I insulted the dog. Uh, we were attacked in our tent by a bear who we had gotten too close to her den because she had cubs. Now, um, our rogue decided it would be a great idea to tr climb the tree and get a jump on this bear you're like okay okay that's probably fine except <laughs> that at the same time our rogue is climbing this tree one of our other party members I think it was the ranger who shot yeah um, he shoots an arrow at the bear not one completely misses and ends up shooting our rogue's arm pinning it to the tree he's now stuck like 15 feet in a tree and he can't he can no longer help us with this fight <laughs> so we're fighting a bear down one person it was it was a lot of fun but <laughs> we all like look at him and we're like dude you just shot our rogue he's stuck in a tree <laughs> none of us have the agility to like get him down plus <laughs> we actually were traveling with a ha with a half orc that has a negative modifier to acrobatics to for like and dexterity. So that was an interesting, uh, an interesting time. Number nine, what is the highest level you've ever played a character to? Um, I've actually never made it 
higher than level two. I really wish I could say that I had, but I haven't. Uh, there were a couple times where I did, so my, so I've only played up to level two, but for the one shot, my other character, she's actually, she's level three starting the one shot. So, like, I played semi higher levels, but not by a lot. Uh, number 10, what's your favorite magical item? Um, I would really like the, the cloak called Wings of Flying, because I really want wings. Like, flying would be really cool, expe especially with the 60 movement speed. But honestly, I just would really like some wings. <laughs> That's it. I just want wings. <laughs> then number 11. If you had an in real life alignment, what would it be? Mine would be lawful good. Like, at best... I'm probably a neutral, like a neutral good, but I'm, yeah, probably lawful good. I don't like breaking the rules. I was always like the, the quiet kid in class who did her assignments, turned them in on times. Not quite, like teacher's pet, but not like a suck up. Just, I just did what I was told. <laughs> so yeah, definitely lawful good. Let's see. Number 12. If you had to date one of your characters, which one would you pick? Out of the two characters I've made, I'd probably go with Nisa. Uh, just because I have her fleshed out a little bit more. And... I don't know. I think it'd be fun to... to date her, since... She's just like... She's a sweet person. If I could choose out of NPCs that I've made, though, there's an NPC on one of the campaigns that I'm running. His name is Brian Ashglade, and he's like, he's like a scholarly wizard type person, but he also, he cares a lot about his friends, and he has, if you spend enough time with him, he has a good sense of humor. And I am a sucker for puns, so <laughs> I'd probably date him. Number 13. Is there a character you want to play but haven't had a chance to play yet? Um, well, like a lot. I've only played a cleric and a bard before. I would really like to play, try playing a paladin because I think it'd be a really cool concept to play a paladin who thinks they've like messed up their vows somehow or they've done a mistake, either maybe like backstory wise, like there was an evil priest who's like, you have soiled your vows and like kicks him out or something. I don't know. But, and he's convinced that he has to do great things in order to atone for these perceived sins. So really, I just want to play a people person, pleasing paladin with self-confidence issues. And then who over the course of the campaign would learn to trust themselves and their god more uh, and not relying on the words of others. I think that I think that would be fun. Plus paladins. I just I would like to play a paladin. Cuz you get to heal heal people, but you also get to hit things. And I'm a fan of that. Uh number 14, are you a dice goblin or a dice minimalist? I'm Definitely a dice goblin. Like, a hundred percent dice goblin. <laughs> I don't have a lot of dice, but if I could get more, I would be very happy. Now, I don't have a lot of dice in my definition of a lot. I do have, I do actually have quite a lot. 
but I want more. <laughs> and the 15th and final question is what ruler mechanic have you never quite wrapped your brain around? And for me, that is the poison state. Because every time, every time somebody's poisoned, I'm like, okay, so it does damage over time. But it doesn't. That's not what the poison state does. The poison state <laughs> uh, gives you disadvantage on your ability checks. And yes, I did have to look it up for this. <laughs> so I looked it up and wrote it down. Um, but yeah, I always have to look that one up. I, I never know. Uh, so that was the D&D &D tag that Ginny D did. If you want to do it, go for it. It's fun. I'm gonna finish putting berries on this bush so you know what you're picking. How do you draw berries? I don't know. Perfect. <laughs> Squares. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's fine. Let it never be said that I'm a good artist. It's fine. <laughs> Alright. Uh, well, that was the D&D keg. That was, that was fun. It was a good trip down memory lane because it's been a while since I've, since I've played, since I've been in college. Um... Yeah. Definitely, definitely a thinker of what I would like to do and different things like that. So that was, that was cool. And I guess I'll finish here and see y'all next time. Bye.